serving fans throughout the Midwest and even more around the world. This is the Show Me Sports Network. The following is an exclusive broadcast property presentation of the Show Me Sports Network and is a high fidelity, all digital broadcast. This broadcast is copyright by the Show Me Sports Network for the private use of our audience. Any other use of this broadcast without the Show Me Sports Network's written consent is prohibited. I'm Ben Schmidt, Justin Kraft joining me in just a moment and we are excited to bring you coverage of this tournament all day long as Hallsville and Harrisburg will kick it off. Winner moving on to face the winner of New Bloomfield and West Strain at 11. And here we go. First batter of the day for Harrisburg stepping in. And that is a first pitch strike 0-1-1 to begin the day. It is Cadence Timbrook stepping in to start things off facing the pitcher Wilden Hain. Brianne Wildenhain is on the mound wearing number 13, the right-hander for Hallsville to start things off. Next pitch is bunted and missed, and that quickly makes things no balls and two strikes on Cadence Timbrook. Yeah, great start right here by Brianne. 0-2 pitch on the way, right-hander looks in, winds the right arm up and brings it. Pitches upstairs, but they rule... Yep, they rule that Timbrook ran around. That's strike three. Had to wait for the call from the umpire, but three pitches and one strikeout for Wildenhair, and she's got her, her morning underway with a strikeout. Yeah, couldn't ask for a better start if you're Hallsville. Do you want to say bear with us? We don't even have the Harris book lineup yet, so we will be putting that puzzle together as we go. First pitch is going to be missed. A ball that is one and oh. It's number eight, Emma Fisher, batting second in the lineup today for Harrisburg. Two games going on here at Hallsville, the home of this tournament at once. We've got Hallsville and Harrisburg on this field. And winner will play later on. And the loser will also play because this is a double elimination tournament. 1-0 pitch is fouled off now. 1-1 one one on Fisher. Yeah, great start right here by Wilden Hain. She is working the counts and she is finding a way to get her command where she needs it to be, putting the ball one, in one the strike zone. It's swung over the top of out in front of it was Fisher, so that makes it one balls and two strikes on the number two hitter. This game started with a Cadence Timbuk strikeout swinging on three pitches, so Wilden Harris got the stuff working early. She looks in for the count. The one-two pitch is popped out of play just behind us, and some fans will have a foul ball to chase after. We'll stay put at one and two. I want to thank everyone for joining us as we got on the air just about 10 seconds before this game got <laughs> underway. But now we're ready to go and we'll have coverage for this entire tournament all day long. 1-2 pitch. That skips in the dirt. Nice block behind the plate by Blakemore. It's now 2-2 two and two on Fisher. Yeah, couldn't ask for a better morning to start off the day here for this 35th annual Hallsville Invitational Softball Tournament. 2-2 two, two pitch, wind to the right arm, the kick, it's line foul. That gets down by the third base coach with the two-ball, two-strike pitch once again. Yeah, no, it is especially really nice temperature. I'm sure it's going to get hot as we get into the uh, later on in the morning and afternoon, but at least right now we're at a good temperature. Wind wind picks up a little bit, blowing our papers around, but it's a, it's a good day to to listen and watch some baseball. Here we'll do the 2-2 two, two pitch once again to Fisher. It swung on a miss as she was late on the fastball. And two batters, two strikeouts for Wilden Harris. You mentioned a nice pitch up at the top of the zone. And Fisher swung through it for out number two. Yeah, she couldn't ask for a better start at Hallsville right now dealing on defense. So now stepping in the number three hitter, Abby Rawson. Bats from the left side. The first left-hander that Wilden Harris will face on the morning. And first pitch is upstairs, swung on a miss, 0-1. And at least early on, it looks like Wilden Hare has got the stuff working. Yeah, so far so good. She is definitely locked in, and the batters for Harrisburg are just having a hard time putting the barrel to the baseball, to the softball. Next pitch just misses outside, so it is now one ball and one strike, two outs, nobody on number three batter in the order for Harrisburg. Just underway here at the Hallsville Invitational. Ben Schmidt, Justin Kraft on the Show Me Sports Network. 1-1 one, one pitch has swung on a miss now 1-2. and two. As we mentioned, this will be a long day of softball. Double elimination tournament. Eight teams here. Myself, Justin, along with Blake and Cameron, who are currently doing the other game going on. We'll have coverage all day. We'll be mixing and matching, so make sure to tune in to see who is able to come out victorious. 1-2 pitch. That swung on a miss upstairs. Yeah, great start by Wilden Haynes, striking out all three of the Harrisburg hitters in the top of the first. 
She Doing goes, a great job. She great puts start. them down in order, and we'll go scoreless to the bottom of the first inning we go. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back on the Show Me Sports Network. Running out of some of your favorite Avon products and haven't seen an Avon brochure in quite some time? No need to worry. Avon Independent Sales Representative Michelle Carty can help with your skin so soft, makeup, jewelry, fragrance, and skin care needs. Avon now carries cleaning supplies, clothing, daily essentials, and several small LG electronic items. You now have the opportunity to shop online 24-7 and have your order shipped directly to your front door by shopping with Michelle at mcarty.avonrepresentative.com. Dot com or find her on Facebook by searching Avon Carty. At the Boone County Journal, we're with you all the way. We know that you're more than just a subscriber. You're an employer. You're a parent. You're a neighbor. Most importantly, you're a community member. It's our goal to provide you with the latest news, sports, opinions, obituaries, classifieds, and more to keep you informed about your community. To find out more about the Boone County Journal or to subscribe, call 573-657-2334 or visit bocojo.com. The Boone County Journal, we're with you all the way. At Centurion Cares, for more than three decades, their focus has been on exceeding customer expectations for contact center software solutions. Their innovative communication solutions include utility interactive voice response software that allows for smart communication features that let your utility deliver superior customer service 24-7. They also provide other streamlined services like automatic call distribution, automated customer callback, reporting, and quality assurance. To find out more about how Centurion Cares can help your business, call them at 727 421 5300 or look them up online at centurioncares.com centurion cares innovative communication solutions back here in the bottom of the first inning between Hallsville and harrisburg and just a moment ago while we were coming back christian jones the leadoff hitter laid down a perfect bunt single for the first hit of the ball game that will go down as an infield single as she dropped that one down perfectly. Now Delaney Crocker will come to the dish with a runner on first base and nobody out. The wind, a bunch shown again. Pitch is high. Oh, Runner's going to try and steal second. She's in there safely, now going to get up, but she'll stay put at second base. She's got the stolen base. Yeah, great job by Jones, especially laying down that bunt, getting an infield single, and then stealing right there. Hallsville's got a leadoff runner here with no outs. So Jones at second, 1-0 the count out coming to Delaney Crocker, the shortstop. Hallsville starting pitcher, Wilden Hare at a dominant top of the first inning where she struck out the side. 1-0 pitch now coming, that misses low. So now two balls and no strikes on Crocker. It'll be her followed by Meredith Blakemore on deck and then Madison Lucas in the hole. Yeah, pitcher Brecker Thornhill has just got to stay dialed in here, Hallsville. Has a little bit of momentum right now with the leadoff batter on second in scoring position. Let's see that what she can do. This is outside, and that's going to allow Jones to move to third. And so now in a three ball, no strike count at Crocker. There's the first run of the game, and 90 feet away, and Hallsville is in business early. So Crocker will step back into the box after taking a look down to the third base coach for the signs. Be interested to see if she has the green light here. She will take it, and that and misses low, four. a four pitch walk. And now runners at the corners with nobody out in the bottom of the first inning. Yeah, I couldn't ask for a better start here for Hallsville offensively. Two base runners on, first two batters of the game, first and third now after Christian Jones, great base running. So now stepping into the box with the catcher, Meredith Blakemore, a ball and player could likely get Hallsville on the board with the first runs run or runs of the game. First pitch to her skips in. The runner's going to try and go to second. The throw down is cut off, so Crocker will swipe second base. That's already two stolen bases and two attempts as the throw went right back to the pitcher Thornhill and now runners at second and third and a 1-0 count with nobody out for Hallsville. Yeah, great job by Crocker right there. Seeing the pitch down and low in the dirt and knew she had the ability to steal from first to second. Nice pitch there delivered to Blakemore. That's in the strike zone to make it one ball and one strike. Runners at second and third, both reaching here to start this ball game. And then the number three hitter, Meredith Blakemore, can do some damage. The wind, the throw from Thornhill, swung on a miss as Blakemore is out in front of the off speed. So now it's one ball and two strikes. Madison Lucas, the third baseman and the cleanup hitter, waits on deck for the Lady Indians, trying to jump out on top over. Harrisburg in round one of this tournament. One two pitch on the way. That misses outside. It's now two balls and two strikes. Jones is at third. She had a bunt single, then stole second and third. And and uh, Delaney Crocker, who walked, 
and then still second is currently right there. Back into the box now is Blakemore, 2-2 pitch, way high, and the count is run full and pretty imperative here for Thornhill that she does not put on Blakemore to load the bases. Yeah, right now Harrisburg needs an out, and Thornhill needs to find a way to try and get her to hit 3-2 pitch, grounded out to the shortstop over to her left. It's Creamer, she throws away and it gets by and that's gonna allow two runs to score and Blakemore is safe at first base. Creamer tried to hurry the throw and it went wide. So not only is it two nothing Hallsville, but a third straight base runner reaches on what'll go down as an E6 and two runs come in to score. Yeah, just a tough play with that shortstop right there. She just looked like she was a little hurried on the throw and it just sailed wide and pats the glove of the first baseman for an E6 and now Hallsville is up two to zero. So give one RBI to Blake Moore as the runner Jones was gonna score on that ground out, but then the second run coming in in Crocker when the ball got wild, and only that Blake Moore reaches now a meeting at the mound. What do you think they're saying here to try and settle down Thornhill? I think right away they're talking to Thornhill and telling her, hey, just stay dialed in, it's only two nothing, it's early, still got a lot of baseball, softball left. And I misspoke, it was not Creamer who made the throw from shortstop, it was actually Moeller. Mueller, we're still filling in the pieces of this Harrisburg lineup because we did not even get the lineup before this game started. So we have some of the pieces, but not all of them. Blake Moore is playing third and Mueller is playing short. Thornhill is on the mound. First pitch to the cleanup hitter, Madison Lucas, and she will take it a ball, 1-0. Blake Moore is now on first base. We've got two Blake Moores in this game. Meredith Blake Moore for Hallsville, and then Blake Moore that is Kaylin Blakemore at third for Harrisburg. 1-0 pitch coming. That skips in there and it gets away. So that allowed Blakemore to go to second. And she's she's in there safely. So no contest there. Another runner in scoring position for Hallsville. Already up 2-0 in the bottom of the first inning against Harrisburg. Just underway in the first game of this tournament. We're about 15 minutes into it. They did tell us they will not start an inning past an hour and 15 minutes of gameplay. Next pitch misses high as a foul ball from Ooh. the other field came all the way over here. That could have, uh, yeah. I could have done some damage. Right over the fence and you know, right behind the scores table. I saw Lucas the batter look back as the pitch comes to her. She lines us on the ground to second base. It is scooped up on a hop throw to first. Is in time for out number one as making the play was the second baseman Macy Ellis, and then she delivered to Carly Ellis for the out. But moving up to third on the play is Blakemore. So productive nine, out for baseman, Lucas. Yeah, great job by Macy Ellis too. Carly Ellis and well needed out for Harrisburg here. So now runner at third with one out, two nothing. Hallsville leads in the bottom of the first and Abby Lear stepping in. She lines that to left and that's down a base hit. Blakemore hit. can crawl on home as Lear's got the first base hit or actually second base hit of the game for Hallsville and they lead three to nothing with one out in the first. Yeah, a great hit and damage just keeps on being done here by this Hallsville offense and they are just being smart on the base pads and they're taking what the pitcher is giving them and then she drives that one to left field for the base hit. So Thornhill the pitcher for Harrisburg having a little bit of trouble in this bottom of the first inning and now out to face the left handed hitter Austin. She bunts it back to the mound. Off of the mound is Thornhill and throw to first. Five. That gets away so the runner will save and be moving up to third is Lear and now the throw goes to second and sliding in there safely. Throw gets away again. Ah. So Lear will come in to score. Now moving up to third base is Austin. She makes it all the way to third <laughs> on a bunt back to the mound and it's now 4 nothing Hallsville. Yeah, I don't think that's what Austin thought she was going to get. But hey, she'll take it. Harrisburg airs left and right and now she's at third here. And there is there's only one out here in the bottom of the first. Rian Wildenhain, the starting pitcher who struck out the side in the top of the first. I think she's going to appreciate the run support. Comes to the play with a runner on third. Only one out in the bottom of the first and a 4 nothing lead. First pitch to her. Misses upstairs 1-0. and The seventh batter to come to the play here for Hallsville in the first. And just one out recorded. Infield looks to be pulled in for Harrisburg. The wind and the fire misses way upstairs. So now two balls and no strikes. We do have the entire infield at this point for Harrisburg. It's Blakemore and Mueller on the left side of the infield at third and short. And then what I would assume would be the Ellis sisters on the right. So although I can't say for sure. This one's lined to right and that's going to get down a base hit. So Wilden Hain helps herself, drives it all the way to the wall. She's going to go to second base and she is in there standing with an RBI double. And that makes it five to nothing with just one out in the bottom of the first. Yeah, great hit to right field there by Brienne. Holden Hain and Hallsville on the board again. Now a 5-0 here in the bottom of the first. So Danica Alley, the designated player, will come to the plate. 
as this long inning for Harrisburg continues. And if this game continues in this direction, Halls will be moving on to the winner side of the bracket and Harrisburg, although it is a double elimination, would be headed for the consolation, consolation side. Although a long, long way to go. We're just in the bottom of the first, but Hallsville leads five to nothing and Danica Alley coming to the plate. She swings first Great pitch, hit. lines that to center. That's gonna get down and go to the wall. Coming in to score will be Wildenhain. On our way to second is Alley, and she is in there standing back-to-back -back RBI doubles for Hallsville. They're now up six to nothing. Yeah, great hit right there by Allie Cummings right up the middle. She just hammered that one to center field and gets in for the double. Hallsville just keeps adding and on, pouring on the runs here in the bottom of the first. Ninth batter of the inning to come to the plate. Hallie Culvert steps in with a runner on second and one out. Here's the pitch. That one outside, 1-0 one and oh on the right fielder. Addie Daly's on deck, and once we get through her, I mean, we will have he went through the entire part of the lineup, but just in this bottom of the first inning, and Hallsville has jumped out to a 6 nothing lead in the first round of this Hallsville Invitational. 1-0 pitch, that one misses low. It's now 2-0. Hallsville is showing out on their home turf, that's for sure. Yeah, they definitely are. And right now, so far, their batters are just taking their time, and especially Haley. Two pitches that you know the Harrisburg pitcher wanted her to chase, but she did not go for it. Grounded foul left side, so that'll make it 2-1 on Calvert. Big thing, too, for Hallsville, they have barely been behind in any counts. A lot of first pitch hacks, mm -hmm. but from what I can tell, I don't believe a Hallsville hitter has been a, a behind in the count. There's been a couple times with some strikes. This next pitch skips in there. That makes it three balls and a strike on Calvert. And looking at it again, there's only been one hitter that's even been to two strikes, and that was Meredith Blakemore, who reached on the E6, drove in a run. So Hallsville hitters are getting it done early. The Lady Indians look great here in the first. 3-1 pitch. This one is lined. Caught by the wow, shortstop. What a catch. Throw back to second. Did they get the double play? Nope. Is back in time safely was Calvert. But that is a hard line out to the shortstop Mueller. And that is a out number two. Finally, we get one. And just getting back into second safety was Alley. Almost would have been a line out double play. Yeah, great catch right there by Claire Mueller. Just her awareness there to get her glove to the softball. Great catch. So we will actually go back to the top of the order in Christian Jones. She let off this game with a bunt single and then stole a base and uh, scored a run. 6 nothing Hallsville. Here's the next pitch. This one lined to right field. That is going to hang up long enough for the right fielder to make the catch for out number three. That will end the first inning, but Hallsville puts up six runs. We'll go to the second. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back on the Show Me Sports Network. 18 Han Custom Laser Engraving LLC has been specializing in all things custom using large format high powered lasers with some of the most advanced technologies on the market anything can become a canvas the state of the art system makes quick work of custom engraving on cups glass tile wood acrylic metal headstones with endless possibilities they also offer custom one of a kind signs that are sure to make your design stand out find them on Facebook at Han Custom Laser Engraving or call 573-489-8732 to find out more on Custom Laser Engraving, LLC, a veteran-owned business. The following public service announcement is brought to you by the Eddie Goodell Society, Jefferson City Chapter 10, doing little things to make a big difference. Want to make a big difference in your community? Be kind to others, drive safely, and put litter in its proper place. Join us in celebrating Eddie Goodell's historic Major League appearance as a member of the St. Louis Browns by doing something nice for someone today. Take the walk, Eddie. Back now on the Show Me Sports Network, Ben Schmidt, Justin Kraft, bringing you to coverage of this invitational on this early Saturday morning. We got here to the ballpark bright and early, and thank you for spending your morning with us. And now coming back out to the mound for the second inning will be the dominant starting pitcher for Hallsville Wildenhair, struck out the side in the first inning, and now faces the other starter. First pitch to her is swung on and missed, and makes it 0-1 on the pitcher, Brecca Thornhill. So the number four hitter in the order. Wildenhair gifted to a 6-0 lead before she even takes him out for the second time. Next pitch misses outside. It's now 1-1 one one on Brecca Thornhill. We'll see if Wildenhair can continue that streak of 
just the strikeout stuff. She got three strikeouts all swinging in the first. 1-1 one, one pitch on the way. This one popped up in the air. Shallow right field coming in and making the catch. Two hands is Calvert. And that is out number one. The first ball put in play for Harrisburg. And the first out here of the second. Yeah, great job right there by Wildenhain just to get the batter to chase that one and pop it up. And then a great play by the right fielder and Haley Calvert to make the play for the first out of the top of the second. Carly Ellis will step in. She's playing first base, hitting fifth for Harrisburg. Bunn is shown, and it's fouled back. So that'll make it 0-1. Yeah, if you're Harrisburg right here, you need some runners this top of the second to try and get some runs on the board to get back in this game. On deck is Caitlin Blakemore. She playing, was playing third base in the... Bottom of the Great first pitch. inning. Next pitch, a called strike, like you just said. So now 0 2 on Carly Ellis. So Wilden here looking to retire her fifth straight to start this ball game in the first round of the Hallsville Invitational. 0 2 pitch is going to miss low and inside. Nice catch there behind the dish by Blakemore. We've got Blakemore at the plate and Blakemore behind the plate. So one ball and two strikes coming to Carly Ellis. The wave of the right arm. Here's the pitch that misses upstairs now 2 and 2. Yeah, just a little high right there on that pitch. So two balls and two strikes. Right-handed hitting third base and back into the box. And here comes the delivery from Wilden Hare. Called strike three backwards K in the fourth of the game for Wilden Hare. Great Out pitch. number two here in the second. Yeah, she's just dealing right now. She's got all the confidence in the world on that mound. Great start. So now Kaylin Blakemore will step in for Harrisburg, looking to be the first one to reach. Only one ball put in play so far for Harrisburg. First pitch to her, misses down low, 1-0. So far, the most balls that Wilden Hare has thrown in a count is two, and that came against Fisher and Ellis. Everyone else she's made quick work of as Claire Mueller waits on deck. Actually, excuse me. This one is grounded to first base and a nice easy play there for Lear. She will step on the bag and that is three up, three down. As another good inning for Wilden Hare has her through two scoreless. We'll go to the bottom of the second. Halls will come back up to the plate. They lead six to nothing while on the Show Me Sports Network. Attention Indians fans, here's your chance to help the student-athletes of Hallsville by becoming a member of the Hallsville Athletic Boosters. Your gifts help provide all Hallsville athletes with a safe and positive experience while attending our school district and also help purchase items that our sports team couldn't otherwise afford. You can join the Hallsville Athletic Boosters this season for as little as $25. Membership is open to everyone. Interested in joining? Look them up on Facebook by searching Hallsville Athletic Boosters or email them at HallsvilleAthleticBoosters at gmail.com. Let's go Indians! Last Sentinel Firearms is your federally licensed and registered Type 7 FFL manufacturer dealer in Missouri, providing quality products to all types of sports enthusiasts, law enforcement, and individuals across the nation. Orders are currently being fulfilled offering custom-built pistols and rifles from the AR platform made right here in Missouri. Visit their website at lastsentinelfirearms.com or call them at 417-684-7202 to find out what they've got for you. Last Sentinel Firearms, you are your your last line of defense. Back for the bottom of the second inning on the Show Me Sports Network. Ben Schmidt, Justin Kraft as Hallsville and Harrisburg locking horns for the first game of this tournament. First pitch is grounded to third base. Blakemore's up with Great it. Stop. Throw to first is in time. A nice pick there by Carly Ellis on the other end. And Delaney Crocker is retired for out number one of the second inning. A much better start for Thornhill on the mound than last inning. Yes, for sure. You're right about that, Ben. Great play by Blakemore at third and delivering it to the first baseman for the out. Good start for the defense here for Harrisburg. So Meredith Blakemore will step in. She had an RBI in her first at bat. Grounds this one back to the pitcher. He gets past her and onto the shortstop. Throw to first is not, not in time. In time yep. As beating it out for the infield single will be Blakemore. Yeah, great running right there by Blakemore. Just running hard and running through the first base bag and she is safe. Shortstop Mueller made a pretty good play on that. I have to give her credit. She came in, scooped it, made the throw on the money, but just a little bit late as it was hit pretty slowly, but hard enough to get past the pitcher Thornhill. And now Madison Lucas, who grounded out to second, will step in, ground out to second her first time up. Now bats in the second with one on and one out. First pitch skips in there. Nice pluck behind the plate by Fisher, 1-0 on Lucas. So Lucas at the plate, Abby Lear on deck. Halsey leads this one 6 to nothing in the bottom of the second inning. 18's participating in this Hallsville Invitational Tournament. Winner 
will move on to face the winner of New Bloomfield and West Strand. It looks like we're gonna have a pinch runner at first base. So Blake Miller will come off the field. Makes sense, she's catching. So want to preserve her legs. Didn't see who came in to run at first base. I think it is number 15, Claudia Robbins. Gotcha. It's a designated runner over at first. Next pitch is going to be a ball. So now two balls and no strikes on Lucas. Next pitch on the way, that one misses upstairs. So now Lucas in a very favorable count with a runner on first base and just one out in the second inning. Halls will look to attack on after an explosive six run first inning. Here comes a right hander's delivery. That one popped up foul. That gets over and into the stand. So now we'll do the three one pitch in just a moment to Lucas. Yeah, Lucas, she wanted that one right there a little early there as she just fouled it off back behind us here on home plate, and luckily the fans were aware. 3-1 pitch, hit well, well to center crushed. field, going back at the that's wall. Crushed. That's crushed, that's gone. Goodbye, two-run blast for Madison Lucas, as she's the first one to leave the yard, and the Hallsville dugout will rightfully come out onto the field and celebrate with her as she rounds the bases and gives Hallsville an 8-0 lead. Yeah, what a hit, which right away, was soaring out of here and we knew right away that was going to be a home run. She wanted it on the last pitch. She got it on that one and she delivered. And you hear the tomahawk chop going off in the background as well as the Lady Indians have jumped all over Harrisburg through an inning and a third. And Lucas is the first one to send one out of here. Basically to dead center as that ball was crushed. Yeah, that was a great hit. Knew right away that was gone. Now stepping in will be Abby Lear. Didn't see the first pitch. Justin was out of called a strike or a ball? Don't know. We'll see in just a moment. We were both looking at our score sheet, so we'll see yeah, now. Yeah, there was a called on the ball way there by the home plate umpire. That one to strike, so we believe now 1-1 one, one count on Lear. Stepping back into the box will be the first baseman, Lear. She recorded out number three to end the second, and next pitch to her is swung on a miss as she was out in front of that one. So it's now one ball and two strikes, so we were right on the ball on the first pitch of the at-bat. It's now one and two, nobody on, and one out in the second. Two runs already in, thanks to Madison Lucas's two-run blast. Here comes a delivery from Thornhill. This one grounded weakly third base side. Over to her left is Blakemore, who throw to first is in time to get the hustling Lear, and that's out to number two here in the second. Yeah, great scoop right there by Clara Mueller. The, or excuse me, Caitlin Blakemore, excuse me, over at third grade scoop and throw to the first baseman for the second out of the bottom of the second here. Well needed out for Harrisburg. So now stepping in will be the lefty hitting Marissa Austin. She reached and scored a run in the first. First pitch misses outside 1-0. and oh. Nobody on, two outs. Bottom of the second inning, 8-0. Oh. Hallsville lead, next pitch misses inside. Now 2-0 and oh on the left fielder. Austin quickly steps out of the box, now back in. We'll rate away to the righty's delivery. Here's the next pitch. That one doesn't catch the plate. It's now three balls and no strikes on Austin with two outs here in the second inning. Yeah, good pitch there by Thornhill, but she just wasn't able to get the call just outside. And the uh, Hallsville batters, they are just, you know, being patient and, you know, selecting the pitch that they want to hit. 3-0 was a call strike. So now 3-1 and one on Austin. Here's the 3-1. That's low. And ball four. So Austin will reach for the second time today. She's on it first base with a two-out walk. Yeah, great at bat by Austin there. Back-to-back -back at bats. She has walked now. And see what she does again here at first. Brienne Wildenhain will step in. She drove in a run, doubled in the first inning. She's and also been she great goes. on the mound. Steal a second, the tag. Uh, and yeah, and out at her. second base yeah. will be Austin. Is a perfect throw by the catcher, Fisher. Can't do it much better than that. That's a caught stealing. That great will throw. end the inning. And Wildenhain will have to head back to the dugout. We'll go to the top of the third. Hallsville adds two more on the two-run blast from Lucas. They lead 8-0. We'll be right back on the Show Me Sports Network. Hi, I'm retired Army Sergeant Trent Dirks, and I want to tell you about an organization that saved and changed my life forever. Retrieving Freedom provides highly trained service dogs to veterans with disabilities and children with autism absolutely free of charge, thanks to the generous donations and support from people just like you. Experts from Retrieving Freedom help throughout the entire process from fostering programs through service dog placement. Retrieving Freedom gave me the skilled service dog, Tracer, who has been my best friend in my lifeline. To find out more about how you can get involved, volunteer, foster, or to donate, visit their website, 
retrievingfreedom.org. Retrieving Freedom, changing lives through the training and placement of service dogs for veterans with disabilities and children with autism. Creating custom, handcrafted woodworking projects has never been easier. Become a member of Sawdust Studios and enjoy 24-7 access to a woodworker's paradise. Outfit with industry-leading, professional-grade tools, Sawdust Studios offers endless woodworking possibilities. Don't have woodworking experience? No problem, as Sawdust Studios offers affordable classes from a community of woodworkers, experienced designers, and master craftsmen. Youth classes are also offered for those junior woodworkers. For more information, search Sawdust Studios on Facebook or find them online at Sawdust Studios. Sawdust247.com. Sawdust Studios, your community wood shop. Learn Mueller in the lead off the top of the third inning for Harrisburg as Wilden Harris back out on the bump. She's retired all six she has faced so far in first pitch. Muir grounded, actually lined to second base, and Daly makes catch for out number one. That might not even be Daly out there at second base. Not totally sure who it was for Hallsville, but regardless, she made the catch. I'll number try and nine, figure out who that was. Austin. Anderson. It was Daly. Yep, Addy Daly out at second base. So yeah, Daly makes yeah, the catch, catch. And that's a line out for the first out of the third inning. And now Stephen will be Austin Anderson, Austin Anderson, pardon me. Yeah, ball one right there by Wildenhain. Nobody on and one out in the third. Anderson bats from the left side, shows bunt and fouls it back. So now a even one ball, one strike count. Muir lined out to start this inning to second base, and now Anderson steps in with Macy Ellis waiting on deck. Yeah, let's see what Anderson does right here. She only has one strike. We'll see if she goes to the bunt here on this next pitch by Thornhill. 1-1, one, one, she shows bunt, and she misses the ball altogether, and it was actually a two-strike count, and that's out number three, another strikeout, the fifth of the game for Wildenair. So Anderson is retired via the K. Now a strikeout in every inning for Wildenair and two up, two down. Overall, eight up, eight, at eight down so far for the starting pitcher of Hallsville as Wildenair's been pretty dominant. Yeah, couldn't ask for a better start if you're Hallsville's defense. Very surprised, though, Harrisburg's Austin Anderson decided with a, you know, 2-2 two -two count to show bunt instead of swinging. Next pitch on the way, the wind and the right-hander's delivery is swung on a miss late on that pitch. And once again, Wilden Hare ahead in the count, or excuse me, not ahead, even in the count. One ball and one strike is Ellis Bats. Cadence Timbrook, the center fielder, waits on deck. This one swung on a miss now, Great one pitch. and two, and one strike away, Wilden Hare from retiring her first nine batters. She looks in, here's her one ball, two strike delivery. Pitch has swung on and missed, and a strikeout swinging back-to-back -back K's to bookend the third inning. Excuse me, not bookend, just end the third inning. And that will send us to the bottom half. Halls will lead eight to nothing. We'll be back in just a moment on the Show Me Sports Network. <laughs> Hello, Blake Gasaway here with the Show Me Sports Network. I've had the opportunity to have some amazing calls, including overtime touchdowns, walk-off home runs, and buzzer-beating baskets. But I've answered another call. That's to serve my community as a volunteer firefighter. Stop and think what would happen if your home or property caught fire and no one was there to put it out. Every day, volunteer firefighters not only save lives and property, but also respond to other emergencies. Nearly two-thirds of our nation's fire departments are manned by volunteer firefighters. And because of this, we simply need Need more volunteers to step up and answer the call. Stop by or contact your local fire department and see how you can become a volunteer firefighter today. I answered the call to serve my community. Will you? In today's world, injury prevention is at the top of everyone's list. However, heat-related occurrences get routinely overlooked. Zealous WBGT puts that front and center. By using cutting-edge formulas and technology, Zealous WBGT streamlines and simplifies obtaining and documenting wet bulb globe temperature readings. With a simple touch of a button, you can check WBGT anywhere in the world, receiving alerts when the WBGT goes over the threshold you select. Join the stress-free way to protect student-athletes, employees, and overall operations from extreme heat by downloading the free Zealous WBGT app today. Save time, save money, save lives with Zealous WBGT. Bottom of the third inning now on the Show Me Sports Network. Halsey leads this one 8 to nothing over Harrisburg and stepping in will be Brianne Wildenhain who was at the plate when a caught stealing happened of Austin to end the second. Next pitch swung on and missed. So it's now a one ball, one strike count on her. 
pitcher for Hallsville has been dominant so far through her three innings on the mound and now bats lead off the bottom of the third. Next pitch delivered to her. That pitch misses upstairs 2-1. and one. Do want to tell you a new pitcher in the ballgame for Harrisburg. Jaden Stevenson, the right-hander, is now taking the mound as she will look to help out her Harrisburg squad and keep this 8 nothing deficit right where it's at. Here's the next pitch. That one lined to center Great field, hit. and it's going to get down in front of Timbrook. That's a base hit for Wildenhain, her second of the game, and she's on to lead off the third. Yeah, great hit right up the middle to the center fielder by Wildenhain. Great start for Hallsville. So now stepping in will be Danica Alley with a runner on first base, and it looks like we're going to have a runner for Wildenhain as she will head off to the bench, and that runner that will be heading out to first base, I thought that was number 19, but we don't have a number 19. Oh, we do have a number 19. I'm looking at the Harrisburg roster. That is Kenya Austin, who is running at first base. Yeah, so. couldn't ask for a better start to this inning for Hallsville with the lead off runner on. Alley will show a bunch. He gets it down perfectly. Oh, Is that they will out. then roll foul? Man, if just that thing foul. if that thing just stays fair, that's about as good as you can do it. But catcher behind the plate, Fisher smartly let it roll into foul territory. Yeah, it probably only went like two or three feet down the third base line, but it was looking like it was going to stay fair before the catcher just picked it up, and it was just on the other side of the line foul. So runner on first base, nobody out bottom of the third inning, Hallsville. All over Harrisburg in this one in round one of this tournament. Back into the box now is the batter, Alley. She'll be in an 0-1 count, number eight hitter here in the third. She'll look at the next pitch that misses low. Now one ball and one strike. Doubled in a run in the first inning in her first at bat and what was a six run first inning for Hallsville. Bright and early here on this Saturday morning. Just a tick before 8.45 a.m. We'll be here all day covering it. Next pitch is swung on and fouled off, so that'll make it one and two on Alley. Saturday morning at 8.45, but no problem with the fans turning out in this one. Pretty much every bleacher right behind us is taken by a fan. That's right. There are a lot of fans on tap here today. Early this morning, couldn't ask for better weather. One, two pitch coming. Alley is showing butt. Now pulls back and will take a ball upstairs. So that'll even up at two and two. Yeah, we've had some good weather here these mm -hmm. last two days out in Hallsville. We were at the football game last week when Hallsville defeated, excuse me, last night when Hallsville defeated Palmyra. Now back again, good weather again. Two, two pitch. That one missed upstairs. Throw behind the runner at first and back in time safely is the designated runner at first base. So it's now a three ball, two strike count as a pitch missed high to Alley. And with Calvert waiting on deck, Halls Harrisburg in danger of putting the first two on. Bunt is being shown by Alley. She will now pull back. 3-2 pitch coming. It's lined to short, oh, and the catch, catch is made. And they're going to have double off the runner. And that will be two outs on a great catch by Mueller and the throw back to first. Yeah, great catch by Mueller there. Was able to make the catch and then throw it to first of the double play. Great instincts there by her. Well needed for Harrisburg. Can't blame Alley there because she hit that ball pretty hard. Just... Happened to me, an even better play on the other side by Mueller. So now a much better start for the pitcher, Stevenson. She's got two outs and nobody on. And stepping in will be Calvert. She lines it to right. That is going to be on wow, the slide. Nice catch. catch by Anderson as that will end the inning as Anderson sliding went down grab. to the grass. Like you said, slide and grab. And that will end the inning. Hallsville kept scoreless for the first time today. We'll head to the fourth. They lead this one eight to nothing. We'll be right back on the Show Me Sports Network. Running out of some of your favorite Avon products and haven't seen an Avon brochure in quite some time? No need to worry. Avon Independent Sales Representative Michelle Carty can help with your skin so soft, makeup, jewelry, fragrance, and skin care needs. Avon now carries cleaning supplies, clothing, daily essentials, and several small LG electronic items. You now have the opportunity to shop online 24-7 and have your order shipped directly to your front door by shopping with Michelle at mcarty.avonrepresentative.com. Dot com or find her on Facebook by searching Avon Carty. At the Boone County Journal, we're with you all the way. We know that you're more than just a subscriber. You're an employer. You're a parent. You're a neighbor. Most importantly, you're a community member. It's our goal to provide you with the latest news, sports, opinions, obituaries, classifieds, and more to keep you informed about your community. To find out more about the Boone County Journal or to subscribe, call 573-657-2334 or visit bocojo.com. The Boone County Journal, we're with you all the way. Dominant right-hander Wildenhain 
Mayer back out on the pump, about to face Harrisburg. Second time through the order, she went nine of nine down first time through, and now she'll face Timbrook to start the top of the fourth inning, and will fire in her first pitch called strike 0 and 1. Wilden Hare has been dominant three innings, six strikeouts, and not even a base runner allowed. Now jumps ahead 0 and 1 to Timbrook to start the fourth with Hallsville leading 8 to nothing. 0-1 pitch is fouled out of place. Now 0-2 up coming to Timbrook. Yeah, she's just dialed in right now. This is Brianna Wildenhain, and she is just getting the better end of the stick compared to the Harrisburg hitters. No balls, two strikes. Pitch on the way from the right-hander, and it's fouled off, so Timbrook stays alive. She struck out swinging on three pitches to begin this ball game, and now is going to have to battle here as Wilden Hare has had a good mix of both the fastball and the off-speed stuff working so far. She's ahead, oh, no balls and two strikes. Catcher Blakemore, Blakemore puts down the signs. Here's the pitch, and it's upstairs, one and two. Yeah, great job right here by Tim Brook, really making the pitcher work in Wilden Hain. And she's got a good bat going here for Harrisburg as their leadoff batter here in the top of the fourth. Next pitch misses just below the knees. Not a bad delivery there at all by Wildenhair. But pitch miss low. So now two balls and two strikes. Here comes the next delivery to Timbrook. And it's swung on a miss for strike three. Seventh strikeout of the game. Second of Timbrook and one out here in the fourth. Yeah, she's just dialed in and she's just blowing by pitches left and right by the Harrisburg hitters. And they just aren't able to come around and make contact with the baseball with the softball, excuse me, and it seems like it's going to be a hard. First pitch on the number two hitter, Emma Fisher, struck out in the first. She looks at a ball 1-0. and oh. Yeah, it's just going to be hard for Harrisburg to find any offense if they're not able to put the uh, bat on the ball. 1-0 pitch on the way, coming from the right-hander. She swings that arm and just misses off the inside corner. That was a real yeah, good, a really pitch good pitch that just missed. And the catcher back there, Blakemore, tried to get it to catch that inside corner, but just did not get the call. So now 2-0 and on Fisher. Also struck out swinging here first time up. This one just below the knees. And Wilden here not missing by much, but not getting the calls on this at bat. It is now 3-0. and She's in danger of allowing her first base runner to reach if she can't find it here against Fisher. Three Got balls and line. no strikes. Here's the pitch. That's upstairs and a four-pitch walk to give Harrisburg their first base runner of this morning contest. And it comes with one out in the fourth in the form of a walk. And that'll bring up Abby Rosen. Yeah, great at bat there by Emma Fisher. And she was really locked in. She had the green light. She didn't need to take it. Ball too high, and she gets the walk. Rawson in the box, lefty hitter, shows bunt, and then pulls back. It's low, so 1-0. and oh. Four straight balls thrown by Wildenhair. Lost a little bit of the command, although she's been so dominant so far through three and a third innings. Now going to have to work back into this count. 1-0 and oh on the way. Pitch is swung on a mix. Great as pitch. late on that one was Rawson. And as you mentioned, a real dandy of a pitch right there. Yeah, Rawson just a little late there coming around and Thornhill is just locked in see if she can try and get a base hit here 1-1 one, one pitch coming it. to Ross and misses way upstairs but a nice grab by Blakemore behind the plate to keep it from going to the backstop and that makes it two balls and a strike Calling time before stepping back into the box is Rawson. Runner takes her lead at first, one out in the fourth. Next pitch, that's a called strike. That makes it two and two on Rawson. And Wildenhair looking for her eighth strikeout. One strike away from getting it right here. Runner Fisher, she walked. First base runner of the game for Harrisburg at first base. One out, two balls, two strikes. Here's the pitch. Runner's going to go to Great second. Pitch. The throw down is on the money. And in time her. to wow. get Fisher. And that's going to be a strike him out, throw him out, double play to end the inning on one. A perfect throw by Blakemore down to the tag of Crocker. And you add in the called strike looking at Austin, and that will end the inning. And another three up, three down for the pitcher. Wilden here, that'll send us to the bottom of the fourth. Hallsville in control of this one, eight to nothing. We'll be right back. 
At Centurion Cares, for more than three decades, their focus has been on exceeding customer expectations for contact center software solutions. Their innovative communication solutions include utility interactive voice response software that allows for smart communication features that let your utility deliver superior customer service 24-7. They also provide other streamlined services like automatic call distribution, automated customer callback, reporting, and quality assurance. To find out more about how Centurion Cares can help your business, call them at 727-421. 5300 or look them up online at centurioncares.com centurion cares innovative communication solutions the bottom of the fourth inning we go hallsville leading this one eight to nothing in the first round of this tournament they are certainly showing out for the home crown here that has came out in support this morning and hopefully Hallsville is playing deep into the afternoon and can make it far in this invitational tournament. They're off to a good start and now leading off the fourth inning will be Kristen Jones. She has reached one out of her two plate appearances, one for two, and will face Stevenson to start the fourth with Hallsville in control of this one. No, yeah, Hallsville has gotten off to a Bond great start. Bond is shown, get down a foul. Yeah, they couldn't ask for a better start on both sides of the diamond, offensively and defensively, and let's see if they can add more runs here in the bottom of the fourth. Yeah, the pitcher so far for Hallsville, Wildenhain, has so far retired. Pretty much everyone in order gave up just one base runner on a walk, but that was erased on a caught stealing. Here comes the 0-1 delivery. Bunch shown again. It's dropped down in front Great of the plate. Point. Fisher out to get it, though, to first. is just in time to get the Speedy Jones as she is retired on the bunt ground out. Not a bad bunt there, but even better play by the catcher, Fisher. No, yeah, not a bad bunt by Jones. Great play by the catcher, Fisher, for Harrisburg to pick it up, throw it to the first baseman, and get the first out of the bottom of the fourth. So Delaney Crocker, the shortstop, who applied that great tag on the caught stealing to end the top of the fourth, steps in and looks at a called strike. Yeah, good pitch right there by Jaden Stevenson. Here comes the 0-1 delivery. Stevenson has certainly settled down a Harrisburg team that gave up eight runs in the first two innings and delivers one that just misses outside now, one and one on the Hallsville shortstop. Crocker at the plate. She reached on a walk, stole a base, and scored in the first and grounded out to third. Her last time up, 1-1. Pitch lined into left field. That's a base hit. That one was hit on the nose, and she will reach at first base with a single, and that's a base runner in the fourth inning here for Hallsville. Yeah, great hit by Crocker to left field for the single here, and Hallsville, they've had about a runner on every single inning so far through this game, and again, they have another runner on with Crocker's base hit with only one out here in the fourth. Into the box now, Meredith Blakemore, catcher, has reached and scored both times she's came to the plate. First pitch to her line to right, and that's going to get down a foul. Otherwise, that was head into the corner for extra bases. Instead, it'll make it no balls and a strike. Yeah, she tried right there, lacing that one down the line, but just fouled by Blakemore. See what she can do here with the second pitch, depending on what Jaden Stevenson is thinking about dialing up. So here comes a no ball, one strike pitch to Blakemore. Crocker off of first base. Next pitch popped up right side. Can the first baseman get to it? She cannot as Harley Ellis just didn't have enough time to reach it. And that'll get down a foul. So it keeps the at-bat going, but now 0-2 on Blakemore. There has not been a Hallsville hitter that has struck out so far in this game. They've only had a couple times that they've even got to two strikes. So could this be the first one retired for Harrisburg pitching? We'll have to see. No balls and two strikes. She's the right-hander's delivery. It bounces off the plate and foul. So we'll do the 0-2 again. Three straight fouls for Crocker. Yeah, foul right back to the fence where we are sitting. <laughs> Luckily, we got the fence in front of us to protect all the equipment we have on tap to broadcast you this game. But here, let's see what... Jaden Stevenson can do. She's oh, got to count. Pitch line. That's into right field, and that's going to get in the gap and go to the wall. Heading the hit. third is Crocker on her way to second is Blakemore. They're going to wave around comes. the runner. The cut off the throw to the plate is not in time. It's sliding in safely as Crocker, and that's an RBI double for Blakemore, her second RBI of the game. And coming all the way around for first to score on the slide was a shortstop Crocker. It's now nine to nothing, Hallsville. Yeah, again, Hallsville's offense. 
capitalizing and Harrisburg not able to get the throw in time to the catcher to get her out at the plate and that's now another run on the scoreboard for the Indians now up nine to zero here in the bottom of the fourth with only one out. Madison Lucas who went deep to dead center field for a two run blast her last time up steps in once again with a base runner on here's the first pitch to her that skips in there one heck of a pick behind the plate by Fisher but it's now yeah, one and oh on Lucas. It was a great pick by uh, Fisher. So Lucas looking for her second hit and She's got two RBIs already, a chance at another if she can drive in the runner out at second. Next pitch misses upstairs. Now two balls and no strikes. Hallsville at least looking like they're well on a way to a victory in the first round of this tournament. Eight teams, double elimination. They will play at 11 if they win and advance. Next pitch misses outside. So now three balls and no strikes on Lucas. Winner of this game will move on to the side of the bracket facing the winner of New Bloomfield and Westran. Meanwhile, the loser of this game will face the loser of New Bloomfield and Westran. 3-0 pitch, not even close. That's a four-pitch walk to Lucas. She'll reach it first. Now runners at first and second with only one out. Yeah, great eye by Lucas. And again, the Hallsville hitters, they're just dialed in. They're not swinging at anything they don't want to swing at out of the zone. And again, Lucas showing her discipline and just standing tall, and she ends up with the walk. First baseman, Abby Lear, she's got an RBI single and a run scored. A chance for more RBIs with runners at first and second, only one out in the bottom of the fourth. Here comes the right-hander's delivery, pitch misses upstairs, 1-0. and Lear bats off, Steen waits on deck. Halsell's been in front from the get-go and it helps they've had dominant pitching from Brianne Wildenhain. She's gone four innings and has not allowed a hit and has got eight strikeouts to go with it. Yeah, let's see what Stevenson can dial up here and try and get Wilden and Hain to swing at it. One pitch line goes. to left. That's yes. going to get down a base hit. On her base way to hit. third is the uh, catcher, Blakemore, and she'll stop right there. So station to station go the runners. That's another base hit, and the bases are loaded with one out for Austin. Yeah, what a hit right there by Wilden Hain. And again, Hallsville has runners first and third looking to add more runs and keep the damage up. So runners everywhere with Austin coming to the plate. It's Lear at first, Lucas at second, and Blake Moore at third. Lefty hitter in. Base is loaded. A chance for some major damage here. Here comes the first pitch to her. She'll swing and foul it out of play. No, no balls and a strike. I like when they foul balls out of play here. The whole crowd collectively yells to make sure no one gets hit. I feel like that in <laughs> yeah, baseball. Yeah, they're very aware. In baseball, they're just like, okay, if it hits you, it hits you. Yeah. You should be paying attention. In softball, mm -hmm. they're going to let you know. Yeah. No balls and a strike up coming to Austin. Here's the delivery. That one misses low. So now even a ball and a strike. This inning, first batter was retired, but then we, since we've gone single, double, walk, single, a run already in and bases loaded. Hallsville leading 9 to nothing in the fourth. Harrisburg pitcher Stevenson just trying to keep the damage minimal. Here's the next pitch. This one grounded right side. Picked up by the first baseman. She comes home for one, and that's all they get is Ellis delivered a perfect throw to Fisher behind the plate. So Blakemore is out at the plate on the force out, and Austin will reach at first, but a big out number two here in the fourth. Yeah, great job there by Ellis to throw it to Fisher there to get the Hallsville runner out at the plate. Well needed out there, and especially to keep Hallsville off the scoreboard. Wilden Hain in, base is loaded, two out. She will swing, ground it right side. Coming in is Ellis. She's up with the throw to first. Is in time to end the inning, so nicely done by Stevenson. Base is loaded, one out, and she gets two ground outs to end the inning and gives up just one run overall. To the top of the fifth we go. Wilden Hain coming back out on the bump. It's 9-0 Hallsville leads on the Show Me Sports Network. Since 2018, Han Custom Laser Engraving LLC has been specializing in all things custom. Using large format, high powered lasers with some of the most advanced technologies on the market, anything can become a canvas. The state of the art system makes quick work of custom engraving on cups, glass, tile, wood, acrylic, metal, headstones with endless possibilities. They also offer custom one of a kind signs that are sure to make your design stand out. Find them on Facebook at Han Custom Laser Engraving or call 573 489 8732 to find out more on Custom Laser Engraving, LLC, a veteran-owned business. The following public service announcement is brought to you by the Eddie Goodell Society, Jefferson City Chapter 10, doing little things to make a big difference. Want to make a big difference in your community? Be kind to others, 
drive safely, and put litter in its proper place. Join us in celebrating Eddie Goodell's historic Major League appearance as a member of the St. Louis Browns by doing something nice for someone today. Take a walk, Eddie! the fifth inning on the Show Me Sports Network. Ben Schmidt, Justin Kraft, excited to bring you all of today's coverage of the Hallsville Invitational. And we've had a good one here, something to get excited about before we've even hit 9 a.m. Actually just hit 9 a.m., something to get excited about here on this Saturday morning as Hallsville leads 9 to nothing, head into the fifth. And head coach Ryan Crane for Hallsville has decided to make the move of the pitcher. Just assume the way Wilden Hain was dominating as she was coming back out. But in a blowout, it makes sense to not push her too hard. And they will turn to the relief pitcher, Haley Martin, who will come in. I'll let you talk about Wilden Hain here in just a moment, Justin. But Rebecca Thornhill will lead this inning off, and she will look at a called strike 0 1. Yeah, great job by Wilden Hain throughout this game, pitching, you know, the collective four innings and striking out eight. And very smart by the head coach, Ryan Crane, to pull her and save her, you know, for later games in this tournament. The way it's looking, they're going to be on the winner's side and, you know, playing. 1-1 one, one pitch, 11. grounded right side. The pitcher off the mound. Martin, she makes a nice play and throws over to first base to Lear for the out number one. Yeah, Wildenhain in her four innings gave up just one base runner. It was a walk to Emma Fisher in the fourth, and she was eliminated on the caught stealing. So still no hits allowed by the uh, four innings of Wildenhain and now the one batter of Martin. So Hallsville looking in command, and I agree with you. I think a smart decision to pull her bunt. Shown, it's dropped down to third. Coming in is Lucas. She throws the first, and that is just in time to get Carly Ellis. And so far, four pitches and two outs for the relief pitcher Martin as Ellis is retired. Nice play by Lucas coming in at third. Yeah, Martin feeding off that energy that Wildenhain had been producing throughout these four innings that she pitched, and now with... Haley pitching now as the relief pitcher. She is off to a great start. Kaylin Blakemore, first pitch to her is a called strike 0-1. We're just about an hour into this game, and they told us that they wouldn't start an inning past an hour 15, and especially with the score being 9 to nothing, I can't see us going too much farther in this one. 0-1 pitch. That one just misses inside. Didn't miss by much, but that makes it 1-1. One and one. It's been Hallsville from the get-go as they put up six runs in the first, two more in the second, and then just added one more in the fourth. They have been in cruise control ever since. 1-1 one, one pitch, fouled out of play. 1-2 and two. so far. They've gone four and two-thirds innings of hitless baseball pitched by the Hallsville staff that has been composed of Wildenhain and Martin. Eight strikeouts for Wildenhain. So far, none for Martin. She's faced this just her third batter, two ground outs. Next pitch, there's the strikeout as a swing yeah, and a miss by pitch. Blakemore as she had her out in front, and that will end the inning. Like you said, a great pitch. What a job by Haley Martin in relief. That'll send us to the bottom of the fifth inning. Hallsville in cruise control. We'll be back in just a moment as they're coming to the plate. Attention Indians fans, here's your chance to help the student-athletes of Hallsville by becoming a member of the Hallsville Athletic Boosters. Your gifts help provide all Hallsville athletes with a safe and positive experience while attending our school district and also help purchase items that our sports team couldn't otherwise afford. You can join the Hallsville Athletic Boosters this season for as little as $25. Membership is open to everyone. Interested in joining? Look them up on Facebook by searching Hallsville Athletic Boosters or email them at HallsvilleAthleticBoosters at gmail.com. Let's go Indians! Last Sentinel Firearms is your federally licensed and registered Type 7 FFL manufacturer dealer in Missouri, providing quality products to all types of sports enthusiasts, law enforcement, and individuals across the nation. Orders are currently being fulfilled offering custom-built pistols and rifles from the AR platform made right here in Missouri. Visit their website at lastsentinelfirearms.com or call them at 417-684-7202 to find out what they've got for you. Last Sentinel Firearms, you are your your last line of defense. Also offense coming to the dish, leading this one nine to nothing. And Jaden Stevenson back out to the mound for Harrisburg. She's been good in her two innings of work, giving up just the one run. Much better than how this game started for Harrisburg and some much needed relief pitching. And Danica Alley leads off the bottom of the fifth inning. Open stance, swings and grounds this one. Foul, 0-1. Yeah, Hallsville still being aggressive at the plate offensively with their bats. And Danica 
Ali is looking to put this ball in play and get it off to a great start and have another base runner on early in this bottom of the fifth. 0-1 pitch is swung on and misses. Ali was out in front of it. So it's now 0-2. Hallsville scored six in the first, two more in the second, and then tacked on one more last inning. Now Alley in an 0-2 count, shows bunt, pulls it back, and takes it low to make it a one ball, two strike count. Great eye by Alley right there as that ball was down in the dirt. There's been a whole lot of contributions at every part in the lineup as every batter but one in this order has reached or scored a run. Next pitch foul also will do the one-two again. One hitter, so we're still looking for is Calvert, who waits on deck. So this could be her chance to make it a perfect nine for nine in the order to reach. So one ball, two strikes. Stevenson back out for a third inning of work. Alley one for two, and here comes the one-two delivery. Swung on line to right field. That is going to hang up long enough. Oh, it was actually right center, center field, fielder. and Tim Brook went over to make the catch. That's more of a line out than a fly out as she tracked it down into the right center field alley. And like you said, a nice play by Timbrook. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was a great play by Timbrook. She saw it right away, got the jump, and was able to make the catch in right field. Great catch. Haley Calvert in, like I mentioned, the one who has not reached yet today for Hallsville. So hopefully she can do that here. First pitch to her, misses below the knees, 1-0. Oh. We'll go back to the top of the order after this. And Christian Jones, who has singled, scored a base, stolen a base, and scored a run. 1-0 pitch up coming to Calvert. She'll swing, hit it in the air. Shallow right field coming in is Timbrook, and she will make the catch. So she is retired or recorded both outs this inning, and Stevenson is retired. Both batters she's faced here in the fifth. Two up, two down. Yeah, Stevenson doing a lot better job on the mound here in the bottom of the fifth. She is collectively dialed in, and great job getting the Hallsville batter to pop it up, and then Thornhill did the rest. First or Timber, excuse me. First pitch up coming to Kristen Jones. She shows bunt, but then we'll pull it back and take a ball 1-0. and oh. Mentioned how nice the weather was earlier. Sun is now pretty far up and mm -hmm. pretty much right shining at us. So, I mean, that's... Yeah, right at our backs. I, I, don't, I think I would uh, take the weather we had earlier. Yeah, it was really nice earlier. At least it's had a little bit face. of wind, but it is really starting to get hot, especially with the sun coming out and everything. Next pitch misses, so now 2-0. and oh. Yeah, I will say... Complaining, but don't want to complain too much because it could be worse where it's right in our face. I will say, yeah. we do have we do have that going for us. Mm -hmm. So two balls and no strikes on Jones, looking for the reach, looking to reach for the second time in this game. Shows bunt, pulls back again. It's now three and zero. Oh, no pitch in this at bat, really particularly close. And Stevenson going to have to battle here or put a base runner on with two outs. Lefty. Lead off hitter back in, 3-0 pitch on the way. That skips on the plate, and that's a four-pitch walk to Jones, and she will trot on down to first. Yeah, great at bat by Jones. Probably a pretty good bet that she's going to try and steal here at some point. Actually, I take that back. And probably not in a 9 nothing game. In a close game, it'd probably be a pretty good bet that Jones would try and steal here at some point. But I don't necessarily see it happening. Yeah, I don't think there's with, any need for Jones score. to yeah. Yeah, steal. Yeah, I, I, I thought yeah. about it for a yeah. second and then realized <laughs> the circumstances. Yeah. So. Delaney Crocker in. She scored two runs. She's stealing. Oh, wow. And Jones is in there at second base. Though gets away, but Jones will stay put at second base. So that's the second stolen base of the game for Jones. And in a 1-0 count to Crocker, runner in scoring position. Yeah, Jones being aggressive. They're still, you know, got to play, you know, like it's... Got to play till it's yeah, over. Yeah, play till it's over. Might be 9 nothing, but, you know, there's nothing wrong with, you know, a steal and being aggressive on the base pads. Crocker will swing, line this one oh, out to left. Hit. It's hit pretty well, but it looks like it's going to hang up. Nope, that'll get over the head of Ross, and that'll go up against the wall. Jones is going to try and come around to score. The throw will and not be in, in time, and she is in there. An RBI double for Crocker, her third hit, and first RBI as that one got over the head of Ross and up against the wall. Yeah, it looks like... It's into double digits for Hallsville. Yeah, it looked like for a sec, Crocker was going to have a home run, but just at the warning track off the wall, the left fielder not able to make the catch, and Hallsville... Puts on the run roll, and that's the game. Yeah, that's, they went 10-0 here I, yeah. against Harrisburg to open up this 35th annual Hallsville Invitational Softball Tournament. Couldn't ask for a better start to start off the morning, Ben. Oh, absolutely. No, completely agree. I think 
Um, I don't know about you, I didn't realize that that was, that was essentially a walk-off base hit until I looked up and you were saying that's going to end the game, and I look up and no one's on the field. <laughs> yes. But, uh, yeah, essentially a walk-off there for Crocker. Maybe that's why they were using the steal there from Jones and then sending her on the double because they knew that run would end the game. So uh -huh. I, that makes sense when you think about that now while they were being so aggressive. Yeah. Not have, trying not to burn an arm for another inning on the mound. So yeah, I, I don't blame them, especially the way they came out offensively and defensively. Well-rounded game for Hallsville. They were not tired at all, especially for an 8 a.m. game. They were awake. It looked like Harrisburg had fallen asleep. I know we were, you know, somewhat awake, you know, right away when we got oh, yeah. here. But Absolutely. right when the game started, Hallsville started putting on runs. That's when we finally started waking up. What a game and a great start. Couldn't ask for a better morning with the weather. And... I, I'm just excited to be here. Oh, I am as well. And you and I are going to get the chance to see a bunch of different teams all day long mixing and matching on the broadcast. But I think I, I think there's two options here for play of the game, and I'll see which one you decide to go with. I'll throw these two names out there. I think number one, Madison Lucas, that home run to dead center field that came in the second inning. I mean, that ball was crushed. You you knew it right away. I, oh, I yeah. held for a second because there's been a couple times where I thought a ball was gone and I've called it gone. Yeah. I stayed yeah. in the yard, but yeah. that one w was crushed by Lucas. No, yeah, and she think, put that one into orbit. I think the other player, Brianne Wildenhain, who goes the four innings, strikes out eight and doesn't allow a hit. Who are you going with for your player of the game? I'm definitely going to say the player of the game. I like what you said and Crocker and everything there with the homer, you know, the way she completely put that one into orbit, and it was gone right from the get-go to center field. But my player of the game is definitely going to be Wilden Hain. Bri Brianna Wilden Hain, she had a great game on the mound. Struck out eight, only four innings of work, and she was just really dialed in. And then Hallsville did the rest, and her energy just fed throughout that dugout. And they all played really well all around and a great win for Hallsville to start off this tournament and now they're going to be in the winner side going to be on the winner side of the bracket we'll see what they can do at 11 a.m. against the winner of New Blumfield and Western yeah like you mentioned that game taking place at 11 Hallsville moves on meanwhile going to the loser side of the bracket will be Harrisburg and the matchups will be determined once we get the final score of New Bloomfield and West Strand. It looks like that game is still taking place on the field behind us. Uh, Blake and Cameron are over calling that one. We will have that game for you at 11 once we do have the winner. Should be hopefully a fun day of baseball, and hopefully Hallsville working deep into the tournament. We've got both uh, the groups for the broadcasters here, Justin and I with Hallsville, and then Blake with Southern Boone as Justin and I will be covering, and Cameron covering Hallsville all season long. But any final thoughts before we wrap this one up, Justin? If you didn't tune in for the broadcast earlier this morning, you don't want to miss out because this is a tournament with a lot of good teams and a lot of fireworks that are going to be on display. So tune in here on Show Me Sports Network. Thank you to all the listeners who listened to the game early this morning against Hallsville and Harrisburg. We... You're in for a treat. That's all I have to say. All right. No, I think that's a good way to put it. So that's just going to about do it for us. Once again, thanks for everyone for listening with us here on this Saturday morning. And we'll be back on both this channel and the main channel in just about 20 minutes. Next game started to get play, stay, take place at 930, and it's currently just before 915. So take care, everyone. Hope to have you back with us the rest of the day. If not, enjoy the rest of your Saturday afternoon. And can't wait to have you again on the Show Me Sports Network. For Justin Kraft, I'm Ben Schmidt. Take care, everyone, and we will see you next time on the Show Me Sports Network. You've been listening to the biggest and absolute best coverage in mid-Missouri on the exclusive home for Hallsville Lady Indians softball, the Show Me Sports Network, and the Lady Indians Radio Network. The Show Me Sports Network broadcast crew are the ones that know your Lady Indians the best. Exclusive coverage of Hallsville Lady Indians softball has been brought to you by Avon with Michelle Carty, Boone County Journal, Centurion Care,